All right. We know that people love the would you rather and people love overrated and underrated. I thought I would bring something a little bit new to the table. Plus those two. This is called this or that. All right. This or that. It's just basically going to be rapid fire. Go ahead and answer. Let's make it happen. All right. This or that. Bulking or cutting? Bulking. Morning or night walks? Night. Stairmaster or treadmill? Treadmill. Squats or deadlifts? Squats. Yoga? No, deadlifts. <laughs> Yoga or Pilates? Yoga. Outside or inside? Outside. <laughs> Train alone or with a partner? Mm, partner. Protein shake or protein bar? Shake. Oh, pre-workout or coffee? Mm, coffee. All right. That is all for the this or that. <laughs> I feel like there should be more context to those. All it's right. not really fair to the listener of like, right. why what is he picking this? What context do you have for bulking or cutting? It's just better to eat more food than less food. <laughs> Believe that. <laughs> Why'd you choose night walks? Um, because I enjoy the it being like the end of the day. I mm-hmm. like to end my day with a walk. Walking in the morning is fine. I'm not huge on like getting outside first thing and getting steps. As much as it may be a good thing for me, I'd rather like get into my stuff for the day and rather than getting outside. Mm, I choose both. All right. Why'd you choose treadmill over Stairmaster? I think this the Stairmaster, there's nothing wrong with the Stairmaster. I just think that it gets like this um, overrated. Yeah, it's like an overrated take because you're able to get your heart rate higher because of the overall intensity. Thus, you're burning more calories. But in the grand scheme of things, just I, I, I find it to be harder to overall recover from, especially if you're an athlete who is in a sport where your lower body is needing to maintain fullness and be able to recover, whatever the case is. So basically every athletic endeavor, um, I find the treadmill just to be better to, to recover from. All right. Uh, you're a little split there on squats or deadlifts. So. Gosh, I love deadlifting. I love deadlifting. I also love squatting. Um, both of those movements are just things that bring a lot of happiness to my life. So it's hard for me to pick one or the other. Well, what about upper body or lower body day? Um, I think that I'll more cons- I, I like, I make myself sick to my stomach with lower body days. Oh, I know. I get nervous. I get anxious. I, I, I love that feeling. You literally bury yourself every time. I love it. I, it it's like one of the most fun things to me <laughs> of just spending two hours just tra- trashing my legs and going crazy. All right. So yoga or Pilates? I've just never done Pilates. I think we should get you in there. I don't think so. Why'd you choose outside over inside? Inside sucks. All right. Uh, why'd you choose training with a partner? Because training with a partner who is a little bit stronger than you, you have good rapport with, you're able to have a good flow of training, nothing beats it. All right. Why'd you choose the shake over bar? Um, Because I more often have shakes than bars, I feel Mm -hmm. like. That may not be true. It's probably naked. Since I found Nash bars. Yeah. Take out Nash bars, I'm 100% shake over bar. Yeah. But with Nash bars included, now I'm, I'm split. Because I have probably one shake and I probably have one Nash bar per day. Yeah. Why'd you choose coffee over pre-workout? Because coffee is just amazing. I, I, I can't, if we're if we're in a place of this or that, I don't want coffee to feel like I'm now not its biggest fan by saying pre-workout. Like mm-hmm. I enjoy pre-workout. I think there's more benefit to the other ingredients that are involved. But coffee is delicious. I just can't turn my back on it. All right. You want to get into some overrated and underrated? Sure. Okay. Tempo training. I may surprise you. Overrated. Wow. Uh, I struggle with saying that, but I do think that it is overrated in the sense that people over romanticize it. It is a tool that is in place to encourage control and encourage control through the eccentric portion of exercises, maybe being able to hold in more challenging portions of the exercise. That is what it's intended for. It's not intended for like, all right, we're going to do a 10 second eccentric and we're going to yell it from the top of our lungs of like one Mississippi and and make it this big ordeal. It's really just a tool to better execute the movements and not just this like I'm doing tempo training. Yeah. I would say it's underrated because if you go to a commercial gym and you see how some people train, that's fair. They're zooming through some of those movements, but I 100% see what you're saying. I do feel like it depends on what I'm around that I kind of feel which way about something. Yeah, it's two different lenses of like, 
I think a lot of people would benefit from applying tempo into their training to improve the control. But then you have the flip side of people who are absolutely abusing what tempo training is, you know, how tempo can be applied to your training. And then that's my problem. All right. Overrated or underrated? Carb loading before a session. Context is so important here. (laughs) Context is so important. So for the person who is eating in a calorie surplus is carrying a decent bit of body fat, I'm going to say overrated. For the individual who is very in shape, maybe in a calorie deficit and um, is really pushing themselves within their training, carb loading is going to be underrated. Uh, before a session, because it is so important for that individual to have those resources available to them for the energy expenditure. But for the person who's carrying more body fat and is eating in a calorie surplus, the timeliness of their carbohydrates is not as important um, than the other individual. I agree with you. Um, uh, Pre-workout, overrated or underrated? I'm going to say mostly overrated. (laughs) overrated because some individuals feel as though that if they don't have the pre-workout, mm-hmm. they can't train. It's yeah. like, I, I, and I've been there. I, I'm, I'm saying this from experience. You know, you put me eight years ago and I don't have <laughs> a scoop of Jack 3D. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, okay, buddy, like I don't have the, I don't have the juice to train today. <laughs> like if you can find me some pre-workout, maybe I'll train with you. Um, so that being said, if you are married to the pre-workout and it's the only way that you train, probably overrated for you, but there are certainly some ingredients that are beneficial to make it adequately rated. Yeah. I feel like for people buying supplements that people like pre-workout is something, if they have no other supplements, they might have pre-workout. And I just feel like it's not the most necessary to have above other supplements. I think, like you said, the ingredients can be super helpful and beneficial, but like you mentioning it, a lot of the reason you were using the pre-workout amongst other things was for the energy and being able to have that caffeine in place where you and I both now really prefer having a non-stem pre-workout. But again, that's the other ingredients are helping with either the focus or the pump or endurance, whatever it may be in place. Well, I would say that most people, if they have no other supplements, they have a pre-workout is because it's one of the only supplements that you have an immediate response of like, I feel more energy. I have tingles in my body because of the Mm -hmm. beta alanine. Whereas if I'm consistently taking a multivitamin or I'm consistently taking a fish oil, there's not a tangible thing that I can say feels different. From the first time you have it. Like I'm not going to swallow those capsules or pills and be like, oh, all of a sudden I feel amazing. My joints feel incredible (laughs) after that fish oil. Like it's not immediate. Yeah. And so because of that immediate feedback, it's just one of the things that people always gravitate towards of if you're going to be working out, grab a pre-workout. Yeah. And it is something where like the flavors are fun and it's something where people have some FOMO and all that jazz. Yeah. Low reps is best. High reps is best. Fruit is so it's good. It's terrible You should you. lift heavy. High reps. Carbs low are weight. needed. Keto squats are bad for your Squats knees. are great You should squat ass to grass. Toes. It's fine. It fits my macros. For idiots. When there are so many mixed messages going around, it's hard to know what you should even do or focus on. But that's exactly where physique development one-on-one coaching comes in. You might have heard of online coaching or even high hired a coach before, but we believe in teaching you the why behind what we do while truly taking your life into consideration. We want to train, educate, and empower you to reach your goals and help you to stop spinning your wheels and just finally feel good. And hey, we're here to help you look good too. You need you. Your health is your wealth. So join Physique Development and let us be the last coach you ever need. All right. Music during training. Overrated or underrated? Oh, underrated. I think, I mean, there's, there's real literature that backs the aspect of having music that is improving training performance. I don't have like the PMID right this second, (laughs) but I do know, tell me, (laughs) (laughs) I do know that there is some research, um, that backs having the, there's caffeine obviously, and then a quality music and, and being able to have someone pushing you with the training, all these things having a positive role. So I would say underrated, um, but everybody's preference on that music side is, is different because Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, I, I go through different phases, of course, but I like a little bit more hype music in general. I like it loud. I like it to be, um, I like a lot of bass, those type of things. Whereas for you, you're good with it being loud, but it's not really like this, um, intense music by any means. Uh, I kind of go back and forth. It depends. Okay. All right. Fasting. 
<laughs> I would say, gosh, this is so hard because again, context is so painfully important. If I sit here and say that it is overrated, people are going to be like, I can't believe that you think that it is overrated. It's given me this, these benefits. And this is what I've seen from it. If I say that it's underrated, then people are going to be like, should I be fast? It should all of us be fasting. It's like it, it can't, it, it's not a good overrated, underrated. It actually is because it creates conversation. Yeah. And so I don't have an answer for that one. I refuse to answer. Wow. Fake. Putting my foot down. I, What's your answer? I will say that it is overrated for the fact if I'm looking general conversation, not just who I'm talking to, whatever. If I'm just looking at a general conversation, I find that far too often when people are starting their fitness journey or trying to like get into it more, that they think and they go, should I fast? Should I do keto? Should right. I do X? Should I do Y? And they overcomplicate it when it's like, why don't you just fucking hit your protein goal and then get back to me on if you should do all these extra things. And so I just hear far too much when it comes to that beginning of, oh, I heard all about fasting. Does that mean I should fast? And it's like, no, why don't you drink water? And then let's talk about something. So I just feel like people try to jump to it way too quickly because it's this nice shiny object of someone did say they got all these benefits from it. And it's like, yeah, maybe they did, but maybe they also had some other factors nailed down and tried some other things before they went straight to fasting. Bingo. All right, uh, protein shake during exercise. Oh, overrated. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> From personal experience, it's overrated. It hurts your stomach. It does not feel good. Um, I've I've talked about this on the podcast before. Chris Bearcat, um, an, an amazing human, a natural bodybuilder, a uh, professor, research. I mean, he's he's brilliant. Um, years ago, I would say every bit of six years ago, yeah. he had a research paper that he was a part of in some capacity that was showcasing of, of drinking whey protein during the workout. And he was doing it as well. And so I was like, I'm going to do it. And I never found a good groove within my digestion for me to be consuming that much protein. Now, provided I also was having a wild pre-workout meal in terms of the amount of calories as well as the density of protein. Come to find out, I certainly did not need that protein intra. Like it was not necessary uh, for me to have that. And so I would say overrated. Mm -hmm. Supersets. I would say oftenly, oftenly? <laughs> Often. <laughs> Often misdone. Yes. In that capacity, overrated. Yes. When done properly and utilized properly. Incredible. Very good. Chef's kiss. Yeah. Can be very useful, whether it be for saving time, training a, a muscle group at a particular length, and then being able to go and bias a different length and, and being able to use it in a strategic way, not just in the simple fact of like, this exercise is hard and this exercise is hard. Let's see how hard it is to mm -hmm. do them together. Not that way but having an actual game plan to utilizing it. Yeah. I feel like people just throw supersets together and it's like, why did you put those exercises together? And people can't often answer it's that. it's hard. Like most people are just going to say it's hard. Yeah. And that's going to be their end of their explanation to why they did it. Yeah. All right. Lululemon. Oh man. I am someone. So I think that most people think it's overrated. So in that sense, I'm going to say it is underrated because <laughs> I, I like their clothes. Now I think that their male clothes, men's clothes so much better. Their male clothes are better than their, their female clothes. And I haven't like, you have other brands in that realm of like aloe yoga and aloe yoga is one where I don't know who they have sizing <laughs> these clothes. I've tried to purchase aloe yoga and I've had XL. I don't, I don't think they go past XL Yeah, and the, their XL fit more like a medium. I yeah. mean, it's fascinating. Now I see Shannon Sharp. This man is every bit of 240 pounds, yeah. right? This man's cranking all kinds of aloe yoga. So I don't know what size he has <laughs> because that man is massive yeah. and it looks good on him. I have no idea what size he's wearing. Um, what's another brand that would kind of fall into that category? I'm trying to think of places that have stores because I feel like right. within Lulu and Allo, they have stores. They also have their online presence, of course, but they have actual stores. So I feel like that makes it in a different yeah. than just online. Yeah, and it's like a different category than 
uh, like Nike and Under yeah. Armour and Adidas, like mm -hmm. they're in a separate category and then Aloe and, and Lulu, and I'm sure I'm missing a couple, yeah. um, but I would take Lulu over Aloe, I guess. Yeah. Lulu is way overrated. I don't remember the last time I was like, I can't wait to get this from Lulu. Like, I don't think the, the bras, I've always had issues with having to go up like three sizes for them to fit. And then they don't have pants without the middle seam. And I'm just sorry, I won't buy something with the middle seam. So that's like a major turnoff for me. Um, so I just like, they also have a lot of things that like the shorts are like so short. And I'm like, my my booty's banging nowadays because I did the PD glute program. So like, I can't wear that. That's not family friendly for me to wear. So um, I'm not about that Lululemon life anymore. I understand. Converse. I think they, so over the last year, I have really shifted my shoe choices into a larger toe box for my feet to function more properly. And this has been a very deflating process because I love shoes. And Converse are a pair of shoes that absolutely destroy your toes and cramp yes. them into the end of them. Um, I like how they look. If I had to pick between Converse and Vans, I don't know. I used to be more of a Converse person than I had my season with Vans, and now I don't really wear either of them. Mm -hmm. I have a, I have one pair of Vans that I wear sporadically. So I'm going to say Converse, overrated. <laughs> I agree with you. I love the look of them, and I have had them since I was a little kid. Like I have had them multiple pairs. I remember I got a pair like that was customized and they said they were Kentucky blue and they said go cats on them. I had ones that had like my initials on them. I've had the ones that are see-through so I could wear different socks with them. And from when we met, like those were my main rider dies were Converse or knockoff Converse that I would be wearing. And I think a lot of people are like, oh, they're flat. They're great for leg day. And to that, I say, you can't spread your freaking toes. Amen. So while they are flat and they might be better than a super cushiony shoe, you want to be able to spread your toes out. And like Alex said, they freaking cram them all in there. Um, but style-wise, the platform Converse, pretty cool, they're huh? sick. Yeah, for sure. Are you sick and tired of your glutes not growing? turning around in the mirror and seeing a board for a booty. I've been coaching for nearly a decade, helping thousands of women reach their goals. The most common goal, grow my glutes. Women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and even 60s, able to grow their glutes with the guidance of my training programs. And for all this time, I've kept my best glute growth secrets only for my one-on-one -on -one clients. And that changes today. We just released our 12-week glute growth program in the PD training app. It is a four-day program with exercise and volume adjustments every three weeks. You can easily access the program through our app and track every single workout. Each exercise will have a detailed video teaching you exactly how to perform each and every movement. And guess what? I am no longer gatekeeping. I'm sharing every single one of my best glute growth secrets inside this program because you are awesome and I want you to have this program. I'm going to give you $25 off, making it a fraction of what you spent at Starbucks this past month. Use code POD. The link to purchase will be in the description. Now let's get back to the show. All right, deload weeks. I would say underrated. Retweet. And I think that deloads are painfully misunderstood in the sense of how they can be applied and, and how to utilize them because I find that many individuals just interpret deload and it's like no effort, just kind of going through the motions. It's like we can still give effort and we can still have a focused goal within this deload of improving on different things. Um, and so because of that, I would say underrated. I agree. Morning routines. Uh, right now, I would say they are overrated yeah. because of the romanticiz the romantic mm -hmm. There we go. <laughs> Romanticization. Romanticization. <laughs> the romanticizing. <laughs> the romanticizing <laughs> that people have had within cold plunges and this two-hour routine in the morning. Journaling they, and meditating. Yeah. And, and I think those are all good things. Mm -hmm. I think they all have their place. And, and if- if it really does do something for you of like, I spend this hour to two hours of my morning doing these things, and then I'm able to get into the rest of my day with a bigger uh, bolus of momentum and just have better days in general, more power to you. Uh, I am, that is not me. Uh, spending two hours in the, probably the most productive time of my day doing stuff that 
is good for me, but not really pushing my day forward is more of a waste of my time and probably draining my overall battery relative to charging me up. Yeah. So I think that you can take some of those things. And I do take some of those things. I have my own modified form of a morning routine, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I think that what they're hyped on like social media of like, okay, you have to do this to have a successful day. It's like, you just have to have a routine that works for you. And it's kind of a status thing too. Right? Yeah. Like a lot of the things within cold plunges, within, uh, within a sauna, within what other things are people doing? Journaling, Journaling. taking time to meditate. I was kind of putting it in the, in the context of like, these things all cost a pretty penny, especially the sauna and the cold plunge. And so it's kind of one of those status things of like, I'm doing this, you yeah. know, like a nudge, nudge. Hey, I'm, I'm, I don't know what, I don't want to say superior, but it's certainly like a status check. Well, I think people also try to make it negative of like, you shouldn't wake up and just get straight into work. And it's like, you can do whatever you want to do if it works for you. And maybe that doesn't work for you. And having time to have a morning routine and spend an hour or two doing those things works for you, makes you feel good, fits into your life. Awesome. Do it. But I'll say for myself, I don't got two hours in the morning to do something before I get into work. So my morning routine is waking up, letting the dogs out, getting my coffee and sitting down at my desk. Now, after I spend a few hours working, then I'll go for a walk and that's some time for myself. But you can really do it however it works for you instead of thinking, all right, to be the it girl, I need to, like I literally saw so many posts um, on Pinterest and other things of like how to be that girl. And it's like, wake up at 7 a.m., journal for 30 minutes, go for a walk for an hour, make your green tea. I'm like, what time, when do you guys go to work? Because that is not realistic for anyone. And I think it ends up making people feel bad who can't fit that in their schedule that they're failing or doing the wrong thing. And it's like, your life may not look like that at all. Yeah. All right. I don't have many would you rathers, but I do have a few. All right, let's do it. All right. Would you rather constantly smell BO every time you set foot in a gym or never be able to shower after working out ever again? Well, this is really unfortunate because I am a huge, huge, huge proponent of smell. Yeah. Like smell really fucks me up if, if, if it's good or it's bad type situation. Um, so BO every time I just stepped into the gym would be so painfully distracting for me during the session. And I would be so self-conscious. Even if I was in, in our home gym training by myself, I'd be self-conscious. I'm the only person in there. So I'm going to go with not showering after the training session. Still disgusting. I don't advocate for it, but it's better than the other option. <laughs> that is a big one for you. What's your answer? Um, it would be never be able to shower after working out just because I don't personally sweat a lot. So I don't normally shower like directly after training. Well, I just, I mean, I'd be in a bad spot either way. Yeah. You personally, for yeah, sure. Because I'm, I'm sweating a lot during That's training That's why session. I chose that one. I thought that'd be really difficult for you. It was. <laughs> Would you rather never sweat during a workout or never feel sore after a workout? Never feel sore after a workout. I would. Mu I love the feeling of dumping sweat. I know you do. It is one of my favorite feelings on earth. This is why I love the sauna. The sauna is one of my favorite places to be because I just love pouring sweat. Mm -hmm. Mine's definitely never sweat during a workout. You would rather never, never sweat. sweat? Yeah. Because really first that's like kind of already how it is. But then when I do sweat. But you like complain about that. Yeah, but like the benefit is that I don't have to always go change my clothes or it doesn't like completely mess up my hair oh, or something like that. Like fair. I can still go on for the rest of my day where a lot of girls that I know that do sweat more, then that's kind of like a no-go and that would be really detrimental to me. Understandable. Okay. Would you rather have strong arms and weak legs or strong legs and weak arms? Strong legs and weak arms. Why? Because I think that <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> I think that strong legs is a much greater sign of like you train hard. I, I feel like it's much more of a branding for yourself of like I've I've got the juice. Mm -hmm. Now if you go in with these gigantic arms and these twigs for legs, no one's gonna respect you. Yeah, I can agree with that. No one's everyone's gonna be like, this guy just does 
Arm day. Yeah, Every it's just day arm, is arm day. day. Arms, arms and chest. And he's, he hasn't had a leg session ever in his life. Mm -hmm. And that just, that lowers you on a lot of people's respect scale. So I don't want to have that. Well, I think also if you looked at how this is read, it's saying strong arms, strong legs. It's not necessarily saying that they're small. So you could have a bigger look to your muscle and maybe still not be as strong. Yeah, but then let's say that you have a, um, like you go into a leg session, you've got these juicy quads, glutes, hands. And then you can't do They're nothing. just hanging. And then you go and train and these guys are like really excited to train with you. And you're like, just leave 135 on the bar. Like I can't go up, that can't go past this. And then you just look ridiculous. Yeah, that's not happening. Yeah, but I mean- if those are my genetics, fucking I'll take it. <laughs> I'll fucking take it. I would probably say strong legs as well. Because also within like women, it's not something we're like having like these massive arms is like the end all be all. So, all right. Would you rather give up Gatorade or protein powder? Gatorade. <laughs> By a long shot. Getting in my protein every day without protein powder would not be fun to me. Like if I, cause I'm already at a place where I have four full meals to go to a fifth meal of like real 40 plus grams of protein. Hard. Hard. I, I don't want to do that. Yeah. It's so much easier for me to have the 50 grams of protein from a shake. Um, and it's so much easier on my digestion as well as my schedule, you know, to sit down and have another full meal is not overly practical for me. Right. Well, that was all the would you, you rathers I had. This is amazing. Wonderful. Anything else? I guess I will ask one more. All right. Let me hear it. Okay. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Any superpower. Teleportation. You just took mine. Okay. Well, it's the best one. It is. Think about how cool it would be to be able to teleport. My my life would be infinitely better. Yeah. Infinitely. But there's there's always a trade-off with those type of things, right? Like you can't have such a good thing without – what's the trade-off? I, there's no trade-off. I would just be able to be anywhere I want to be. Like do you think that – I think one very possible setback for this is that when you teleport, when you get to the location, you're just butt naked. No. Like you, the, you move so fast that it rips your clothes off I of you. If I have a superpower, <laughs> then I, I just get to do what it is. Like no, it's I think not there's like, always a drawback. Oh, because you can fly, now you can't do that. Like that's not how superpowers work. No, I feel like that's everything in life. All right. Well, I would just be able to teleport and it would be fantastic. It would make my life so much easier and better. See, here's here's my thing. I, I enjoy having conversation with you. I mean, we sit on this podcast, you and I sit and talk all the time. But one place that you really just shut me down is when we rift about possibilities because <laughs> you're so like, this is the 100% certain answer. And it's like, just just have an idea. I mean, what would be a drawback of, of teleporting? I think that mine of being butt naked as soon as you get to your location, possible, sucks. I Why? It'd be hilarious. Why? Why what? Why would that happen? Because there's just drawbacks to everything in life. There's always, you know, nothing is perfect. Okay, what's the drawback to working out? Um, injuries. Okay, but they don't happen all the time if you're smart. Maybe you're only naked every fifth teleportation. Oh my God. <laughs> well, that will be enough for me today. So make sure you share this with a friend you think would get a good laugh out of this. And we'd love to hear your answers to any of them, especially if you disagree with us. You know, make your case. Let's hear it. What is the drawback to teleportation? <laughs> there is none. You already know the answer to that one. But thank you guys so much for joining us and we'll catch you in the next one.